Welcome to another episode of Mark Cruise Media. There will be no drones today, but today I want to talk to you about filters. What are they and what they do? So, what are lens filters? They are a piece of glass that you attach at the end of your lens, blocking off some types of light, affecting your final image. Well, sometimes they affect the exposure of the images, other times they affect the color. Here before me are the most common types of lens filters. Let's start with the UV filter. So a UV filter blocks off ultraviolet rays going into the camera, although from personal experience, I have not seen any remarkable changes in my images with this. So this is being shot without a UV filter, and this is being shot with a UV filter on. You see any difference? One advantage of using these types of filters is that it protects your lenses front element from dust and scratches. So just put a UV filter in front of your lens like so. Leave it there and that lenses glass will be forever protected. Also, I've heard a lot of instances where one dropped their lens and because there's a filter attached, the filter absorbed all the damages leaving the lens's front element intact. Next would be a circular polarizing lens filter or CPL. A CPL is colorless and filters out light with a particular direction of polarization. This reduces oblique reflections on non-metallic surfaces, can darken the sky, and uh, can saturate the image more by eliminating unwanted reflections. This filter will help you get rid of reflections off of water, glass windows, and other reflective surfaces that you want to shoot through. Here in this example, the sky is too white. We are going to attach the CPL filter and immediately, we see an improvement in our image, particularly the sky. So once again, here's without the CPL, and here is with the CPL. Next are my favorite type of filters, the neutral density filters or ND filter. This particular ND filter is a variable ND filter, meaning you could change the amount of the effect by rotating the filter around. These are designed to cut back stops of light going into the camera, allowing you to fully open your aperture for that creamy bouquet. On a sunny day, you could expose for the sky, going up to about f16 or so, but by doing so, you would have a wider depth of field. But with an ND filter, you could fully open that aperture for a shallower depth of field. This is without an ND filter at f8. Now you can see that the depth of field is really deep on this shot. Now this shot is with an ND filter shooting at 1.4. You can see how creamy my background is. This shot is impossible without an ND filter. Now, with these filters, you can dial down the exposure to reveal your sky, but there will be some instances like, for example, when you're shooting into the light, when the sun is behind you, um, you could expose for the sky, but your foreground will be too dark. One way to fix that is to light up your foreground, but when you're shooting an entire landscape, lighting your foreground is impossible. So with that, we need to use a graduated ND filter. So here I have my filter mount and the graduated filters look like this. So you can see that the effect is gradual from 0 to ND unlike these ND filters that you would have the effect all across your frame. Here you could control the effect by leaving the bottom half of your frame unaffected and the top half, that could be your sky, affected with ND. These graduated filters come with different shades. I have about eight of them, and uh, each has a uh, different amount of effect. So in this example, we are shooting without a filter, and as you can see, we have the foreground's exposure nailed, but the background is washed out. I could dial down the exposure to reveal our sky, but if we do that, we would lose details in our foreground. So I'm going to attach this graduated filter, and uh, line it up so that only the top half is affected. We could already see that there is an immediate improvement in our exposure. You can see that the exposure on our foreground remained the same but our sky has dramatically changed. 
I'm still not happy with the result so I'm going to stack up another one of this and see if it gives me the look that I'm after. It revealed more of the clouds but I am still seeing a bit of a hot spot in the middle so I'm gonna add one more and line it up for maximum effect. And right about there is the sweet spot. Now that you've seen how these filters work, what do you think your first filter purchase would be? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Share this video to your friends who you think would need this information. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell for my future uploads. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.